Hello and welcome to the Electrician's Hangout. Uh, we're going into the second part of the tutorial on how to install an outlet. Uh, in the first tutorial, part one, I pretty much ran through the different uh, parts of the outlet, which wire is hooked to which side and so forth and so on. So I'm going to try not to be redundant here and go over the same thing twice. Uh, in this particular tutorial, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to learn a little bit about the rules of installing outlets and uh, we're going to extend from the first outlet that we installed in tutorial one, the one that comes straight from the panel, to the outlet itself and we're going to extend from that outlet and, and install a second outlet. Okay, rules. When you're running Romex or non-metallic sheave cable through your, your joists or your studs, you want to do your best to try to keep the hole that you drill for your cable to run through like dead center of the, the, the actual stud. Uh, <clears throat> the code requires that you have an inch and a quarter clearance from each side. If for whatever reason you can't uh, drill your hole so that you have an inch and a quarter clearance on each side you install what's called a nail plate Unfortunately, I don't have any nail plates here to, to show you guys But it's just a little metal plate that you put in front of the hole that you drilled on the front of the stud and you uh, Hammer it into the stud there and it protects the cable from uh, Any screws or nails that you put in once you put up your sheet rock or whatever type of covering you're going to put on your wall. When you're running your Romex cable, you want to make, uh, put a strap every four feet. The code requires four and a half, but I'm going to tell you four. And when you're using plastic boxes, you want to make sure that you have a Romex staple within eight inches of your box. The code says 12 inches, for, but for plastic boxes, you want to maintain uh, a strap within eight inches of your box mainly because you just have knockouts in there and there's nothing really holding it so within eight inches of a box you're going to have a Romex staple. Uh, the code also has a requirement for the number of outlets to be installed along a wall line and the code has a really really bad way of pretty much telling you to space your outlets 12 feet apart and what it says is that when you measure anywhere horizontally along the wall line within six foot you should have an outlet and all that means basically is put them 12 foot apart I would suggest putting them a little closer together that way uh, you know you exceed the, the code requirements and the reason for that requirement is that most appliances have a six foot uh, cord on them and it reduces tripping hazards so that you're you know anyways we're not going this is not a code code lesson and I'm not going to try to teach you electrical code but when you're doing your project and you're laying out your basement or whatever whatever room you're doing you want to make sure that your outlets are no more than 12 foot apart no more and you want to have one within uh, six foot of any door okay anyways we're gonna move right along here uh, make sure I'm not missing anything on except for in the kitchen along counter spaces you want to you want to have your outlets within three feet of each other and if you have more than one foot of counter space you want to make sure you, you include an outlet there as well and also if you're doing work in the kitchen you want to make sure that those outlets are on a uh, 20 amp circuit which basically means you're going to run 12 gauge wire if you go back to uh, my other tutorials they they kind of explain the different wire sizes and some of the common uses for it. Uh, if you're installing an outlet in the bathroom, it should be on a dedicated uh, 20 amp circuit as well, 12 gauge wire. So now that we went over a little bit of the ground rules, we're going to go ahead and extend this outlet. Uh, <clears throat> when you extend your outlet, you'd be tempted to take and put one set of wires at the top and one set of wires at the bottom of the outlet is it can be done that way and I don't believe there's any rule that says that you can't do it that way but 
I'm going to suggest that you don't do it that way. And the reason why is because when something goes wrong with one outlet, it's going to affect anything that comes off the load side of it or, or that second set of screws. If this is your 110 volts coming in and the set of wires that you put on the bottom is going to supply your next outlet, if this outlet goes bad, everything behind it is going, going to die. It's going to be, it's going to be gone. So I suggest using what's called pigtails. And with pigtails, you just take take everything. And again, as you notice, as we're putting this together, we're going to do the whites first. And I'll explain to you why you work that way in uh, the first uh, part of this tutorial. So we're going to twist these guys together here, like so. And uh, I'm going to twist our black wires here together. Ungrounded conduct this. splice there but I'm actually rushing because I'm trying to keep this tutorial here uh, short and to the point put your wire nuts on and uh, a lot of times when I'm putting on my wire nuts what I'll do is I'll use my side cutters I'll get it as tight as I can by hand and then use the side cutters to twist it on even tighter that makes for really great connection and it's just good all the way around Okay, so we have that there. I'm not going to use the side because it's all going to come apart soon for the next tutorial. So there's no need in getting, getting that anal about it there. So there you have the first connection. And on the second connection, you pretty much do the same thing. The black wire goes on the bronze screw. As I told you guys before, I'm not going to go with my patented clamp it down with the side cutters and all that for the sake of expediency here. Tighten them down like so. The white wire goes on the silver side. Like so. And if you go back to the first tutorial, I told you guys about how to make sure that your hook that you make is facing the side of the screen. The, the uh, screw that's being tightened down, which is to the right, righty tighty, lefty loosey, and that keeps your wire from popping out as you're tightening it down. And that's pretty much it. That's how you extend the outlet. Uh, <clears throat> and I didn't go through it on this tutorial about, you know, remind you guys to check the circuit before you start to make sure that it's, you know, it's dead. And the way you do that is by taking your meter and going to an outlet that you know is working and the way you know it's working is something's plugged into it and whatever it is is actually working you know maybe a lamp or something like that you turn the light on it comes on that outlet's hot you test it you get voltage you know that your meter is good you bring your meter back to the circuit that you're working on or preparing to work on and you test it make sure that the uh the circuit is actually dead and then and only then do you proceed to, to work on it. Uh, I believe I've covered everything. And if I forgot something more, if you have any other questions, you could always just uh, leave a comment. And I'll either make a video tutorial on, on uh, how to answer that question or what the solution is. Or we can just do it by good old fashioned typing, which I'm pretty terrible at, by the way. But uh, that's pretty much it. Only other question you guys might have is how many outlets to put on any one circuit. Unfortunately, that's a complicated question, but I'm going to just give you the short rule of thumb. On a circuit that you are using 14 gauge Y on or 15 amp circuit, I say no more than 10. If the circuit is a 20 amp circuit using 12 gauge Y, I say no more than 12. But 
ultimately it depends on what you're intending on using the outlets for what's being plugged into them what type of load so forth and so on and we could always get into that into a, in a future tutorial but for this particular tutorial when installing the uh, outlet part two i think i pretty much covered everything and again if you have any questions leave a comment and i will definitely get back to you asap so thanks for joining me and i look forward to doing the next tutorial but until then bye bye